Uh, welcome, friends, to this second and our final day of our holiday party. I hope you enjoyed the holidays and you will enjoy the rest of the holidays also. I am glad I was able to share some jokes with you and I am glad I was wearing a red jacket. <laughs> I am saying this because I got lots of emails, many more last night, all praising the jokes and the red jacket. <laughs> Nobody talked of what I said. <laughs> so now I know what is needed. Jokes, red jacket. <laughs> and jokes became popular because I got two more jokes today. <laughs> and one from my good friend Rishi, who I really appreciate for... Oh. I don't know if you can see at this distance, this joke is called Polly Learns a Lesson. It's about a parrot. This is, with no picture, also a parrot. And the other, Jonathan joke is also a parrot. So today, let's start with three parrot jokes. <laughs> Why I say parrot jokes? Because uh, parrots uh, can imitate human language, whatever we speak, they can speak. They are very good copycats. And we are living in a world of copycats. Everybody wants to copy everybody else. The biggest copycat is Carl, the negative power, the time factor, which has copied the ultimate creative power, ultimate God has been copied by time and was doing the same thing. I want souls like you produce souls. I create my own minds and I attach the minds to the souls. So the parrot jokes have been very popular and they have also been popular in uh, in spiritual literature. And I'll, uh, I'll start with these jokes and then tell you the spiritual joke. This I have to read. Three sons left home, went out on their own and prospered. Getting back together, they discussed the gifts they were able to give to their elderly mother. The first said, I built, built a big house for our mother. The second said, I sent her a Mercedes car with a driver. Third smiled and said, I've got you both beat. You remember how mom enjoyed reading the Bible? And you know she can't see very well anymore. I sent her a remarkable parrot that recites the entire Bible. It took elders in the church 12 years to teach this parrot. He's one of a kind. Mama just has to name the chapter and verse and the parrot recites it. Soon thereafter, mom sent out her letters of thanks. Milton, she wrote to one son, the house you built is so huge. I live in only one room, but I have to clean the whole house. <laughs> Gerald, she wrote to the other, I am too old to travel anymore. My eyesight isn't what it used to be. I stay most of the time at home, so I rarely use the Mercedes and the driver you sent. But the third son she wrote, Dear Donald, you have the good sense to know what your mom really likes. The chicken was delicious. <laughs> okay. This has come from Edward. I think Edward brought it. Polly learned the lesson. Once upon a time, in a parallel universe, a fine fellow by the name of Frank received a parrot as a gift for his birthday. The parrot was fully grown with a bad attitude and a worse vocabulary. Every other word was an expletive. Those that weren't expletive were, to say the least, rude. Frank tried and tried to change the bird's attitude, 
constantly using gentle speech, playing soft music, meditating, anything he could think of to try to set a good example for the parrot. Nothing worked. Frustration ensued. He yelled at the bird and the bird got worse. He shook the bird and the bird got angrier and ruder. Finally, in a moment of desperation, Frank put the parrot in the freezer. For a few moments, he could hear the bird squawking, kicking and screaming and then suddenly there was quiet. Frank was frightened that he might have really harmed the bird and quickly opened the freezer door. The parrot calmly stepped out onto Frank's extended arm, looked directly into Frank's eyes and in a milder than usual tone said, I am sorry that I have offended you with my language and actions. I ask your forgiveness. I will correct my behavior. Frank was astonished at the change in the demeanor and was about to ask what had induced such a dramatic shift when the parrot continued, with your permission, May, may I ask what the chicken did? <laughs> and you have all heard uh, Jonathan's joke, but I can still tell you again. Jonathan's joke is about two parrots, not one parrot. That a pastor of a church had two parrots and he trained them to recite verses from the Bible and speak up other holy words. So the, it was a great atmosphere created the pilots and they also were trained how to use beads in their paws. They were holding beads and moving the beads and reciting holy words created a very holy atmosphere in the church and in his house. So one of the parishioners, he saw what a great idea it is to have parrots speaking out the holy words. So he asked the uh, the, uh, the, the priest, he asked him, how did you get these parrots and they speak so nicely? And the priest said, you can train the parrots. Whatever you train them, they speak the same thing. You can get two parrots and they will also speak the same thing. So this man also went to the market and bought two parrots and got some beads to put into their hands. And then he trained, tried to train them, but when he opened the parrots, in the cage at his house, there were two female parrots. He discovered they were female parrots. And as soon as he opened the cage, they came out and said, We are hookers. You want to have a good time? <laughs> he was shocked what kind of parrots I've got. Anyway, he went and told the pastor that I got these parrots, but they are female parrots that speak this kind of language. And the pastor said, Some old other owner, earlier owner might have trained like that, but you can retrain them. You can teach them holy words and they will speak that. In fact, he suggested, you can take my parrots and when they will speak holy words with beads in their hands, your parrots will also learn. So he brought the two parrots of the pastor to his house and they were speaking holy words with the beads in their hands and he opened his own cage and the two female parrots came out and said the same thing. We are hookers. You want to have a good time? On that, the pastor's one parrot looked at the other and then he screamed, Throw away your beads. Our prayers have been answered. <laughs> <laughs> but the first story I heard about a parrot was that there used to be a merchant who used to travel from India to Africa and every time he went to do some business, he was doing import-export business to carry some goods from India and exchange them and bring some other cashew nuts or something that were growing in Africa. So he was into that business. But during one of his visits to Africa, he passed through a big forest, a jungle, and he saw a lot of parrots there. He liked those parrots and he decided to take one home. So he bought a cage and captured one of the parrots and put him in the cage and brought him back to India. The parrot was very happy and this uh, merchant began to feed him with the most favorite thing that parrots like to eat. If you are from India, you would know the parrots love churi and mirch, that is chilies and something soft made out of wheat and uh, 
jaggery or something is taste good for the parrots i think you can also taste it and it's a favorite of the parrots so churi and chilies were served to the parrot parrot enjoyed he was living in that cage happy enjoying learned how to speak words learned how to sing so next year when the merchant was going back to africa he asked the parrot in his cage i am going back to your homeland do you have any message for the folks back home and the parrot said yes tell them i am enjoying my time in this cage i enjoy singing i eat churi and i eat chilies and i dance and sing and i am very happy so the uh, the owner of the parrot said okay i will convey your message after finishing his work in africa he went back to the same forest and he said gathered all the parrots he said come i got a message for you people from a parrot i took with me last year so they all gathered around him and he said my parrot in the cage he says he is enjoying his life in the cage he sings and dances and he eats churi and chili and very happy on this one of the parrots an elderly one sitting on a branch near this man suddenly had tears in his eyes and he fell down dead he was very shocked that this parrot must have been very close to the parrot i took with him so he said it's a sad thing but he came back and told the parrot in the cage that i conveyed your message that you are enjoying your life in the cage and you eat churi and chilies and you dance and sing everybody seemed to be okay with that except one elderly parrot who was sitting on the branch of the tree and when i gave him this message he had tears in his eyes and he fell down dead on hearing this message the parrot in the cage had tears in his eyes and he fell down dead and the merchant was so sad if these parrots were so close to each other why should i have conveyed these messages anyway feeling sorry he took the dead bird out and threw it outside as soon as the bird was thrown out the parrot opened its wings and flew out and he said you aren't dead after all he said no neither is the elderly parrot dead there he just sent me a message through you and the message was if you want to get out of the cage die while living <laughs> and that's the spiritual message so that is where we started from the parrot jokes i understand we have some more singers today and we may have some more songs and little more holiday entertainment and uh, jonathan is going to call upon some of these people who have offered to provide you holiday entertainment and i'll also be very happy to listen to them these were beautiful songs and bhajans bhajan means a devotional song and uh, those who understood the meaning so how deeply they reflect the devotion of a disciple for his master it is a very unique relationship this is it's not like any other relationship that we feel so connected with the master one of the big things that happens in relation with the master is that it comes from somewhere deeper in ourselves than any other relationship and if we don't know how our soul operates our soul is the deepest thing inside us the heart and the mind and the emotions and they are all outside of it but the soul is the deepest part of us and somehow then we come in contact with the master thus our soul is touched and the master soul touches our soul which is pure love being exchanged it's a love which is so pure so different because it defies the definition that we have over here a master's love for us is so unconditional it's difficult to believe it exists in this world he never judges he is not come here to say are you good or bad the other agency is doing it the whole law of karma is based upon that good and bad you do good you are rewarded you do bad you are punished master don't come for that i remember with very with great clarity a man who came to great master 
and he fell at his feet and he said master forgive me you told me not to eat meat you told me not to drink alcohol you told me be of a good moral character i broke all these promises i made to you last night by being in bad company we ate meat we drank alcohol we womanized we did everything wrong according to your instructions please forgive me the great master said all right you are forgiven don't do it again he said thank you thank you and he ran away there were secretary sitting next to the master one was a retired judge i remember one was a senior professor in a university they were all people educated around the master they said master a man disobeyed you and did not follow any of your instructions and he simply comes to you and he says forgive me and you say i forgive you supposing he does the same things again and he comes to you will you still forgive him he said he asked for forgiveness i forgave him and if he comes again to ask for forgiveness i will forgive him he said master when will you punish him he said there are so many others punishing him his own mind is punishing him he should have seen how much his own mind has punished him before he came to me please don't put me into the category of punishers let me remain on the category of forgivers masters are always forgivers it's an amazing experience that they have not come here to judge our situation in the life here they know we are trapped they know what we are going through certain karmas they know our plight they come with compassion they come with utmost compassion and love the purest love which is defied anything that we know here because it's totally unconditional no judgment at all these masters don't judge at all and they are constantly taking care of us because their approach is we are souls trapped here and they have come to take us back home they are continuously designing the best way to take us back home depending upon where we are what body we have where we are born where we are living what our karma is they take that into account and find the best way to help us to go back to our true home and that is why when you deal with them it's a very different feeling you get and i am constantly reminded of my experiences with great master picture you see here azur maharaj baba sawan singh ji i saw his love for everybody and i saw and yet sometimes you can't understand how these masters express their love sometimes they can express in a very unorthodox way and that also i should relate to you one of my experiences the most traumatic experience of my life in relation to my master master was walking outside in the dera and people had lined up on both sides about 8 or 10 people were following the master i was one of them we were walking behind the master and the others were people his bodyguard and uh, uh, um, somebody secretary some follower somebody who to take him somewhere just going for a walk and people lined up in the sevadars about very particular that nobody should come and come in the way of the master walking so they made the road clear for him and sevadars were lining up on both sides and people were behind them trying to have a glimpse of the master and with folded hand they were all standing one elderly woman broke that cordon which was placed by the sevadars ran inside and touched the feet of the master so master had his cane with him he took the cane and beat her i am witness to that an old lady being beaten up for what offense has she committed that she is paying respect to the master she is expressing her devotion to the master and he beats her up 
and i couldn't understand i i'm telling you i lost faith in the master he cannot be a master who can get so angry that a woman is just breaking a little cordon to come and pay respects to him and he beats her up and then i try to look at his face does he having any remorse or something he was smiling i would follow him i left him i went to see what happened to the lady and since seva das took her away she was sitting on a platform on the side we many people rushed to see her i also rushed i left the master i said first time i have discovered he can't be a master he is uh, so angry and then he is not uh, feeling any regret over what he did so i went and that lady old lady was beaming with smiles she said in one second the master has taken away all my karma i am the luckiest of all i couldn't believe that such a thing could happen in this particular way nobody can understand that a master can do something which looks so different to us and actually it was of a benefit to her she was a changed woman from that moment and i followed up on that to understand that one can never know uh, what one needs what one what one gets how one gets of course when i told the story uh, in the united states when i first came in the 60s i happened to tell this story to a group of satsangis because i told them there are something that happened which completely shake our faith in the master till we learn something more later when i told this story i uh, didn't have this kind of a cane i have now which is like master's cane i have a small thing with me in my hand they all came please beat us <laughs> i said what kind of message am i giving <laughs> now uh, being beaten is not a great thing but just because we don't understand that this is what happened so sometimes the masters can she got uh, with a stick but sometimes came masters can little little slap on the this but with love never forget everything a master does is with love because he is love personified there is nothing else in that master if there is not love there is nothing else in the master so that is why when i heard these songs today it brought to my memory the great moments that we have experienced with great master baba sawan singh whose love was so deep and so great that it beat all records and that's why we understand what a perfect living master is like an ordinary human being but absolutely extraordinary in what he knows and what he is doing absolutely extraordinary he is just wrapping up the totality of consciousness wrapping up the creator god himself in a human body that's what a perfect living master is it's very difficult to understand but th- that is why we have to verify these kind of statements and verify these findings we get through meditation meditation is a good thing because it it's a validation of thing that we learn Uh, it does not mean that uh, if a master accepts you he is going to judge whether you are qualified to go back to true home or not if he has said you will you will he, the rest of it we are too much involved in things here we can't understand the value of what the master says i accept you we don't understand the value of it it's a deal done it's a completely done deal but to validate that really did he mean it did will it really happen we meditate and find out by going within and the further we go the greater our amazement at who the master is we look upon the master as a human being maybe an enlightened human being one who has had great experiences that's what we think of a master a master has done what we are supposed to be doing and he is an example for us that's what we think we meditate and we see him inside and we say yes it's good that we can have a contact with him inside and outside 
while he is alive both contexts look very good sometimes the mind doubts if the inside is real outside is real our whole reality is outside in the physical plane our reality continues to be outside when we meditate in the body we still think is something happening in this body it's very difficult to even know that an inner body is generating this experience of a physical body we think physical body is real inside we have an experience of something so that's how we proceed when we see the is inner master is good that we have been able to have somebody the same master real master outside also appears inside the truth is the other way around the real master inside appears outside and we take it the other way around because we are taking the outside reality then we go to the master and he takes us and if we are curious people i am very curious i must confess i was right from the beginning i was curious in exploring what's inside i was not in a hurry to go back to true home i said i have enough time if you go with the master inside you will find that how these great realms of creation physical worlds several physical worlds this is not the only physical world there are so many you can travel to other physical worlds through meditation you will see that what we talk of are there aliens are there galaxies having any other planets like our a different kind of lifestyle different kind of bodies yes they all exist and one can what god travel in the physical body like that but you can travel internally master shows you those if you are curious and interested he makes the journey very interesting and when you find that there are souls who are ascended to rule over those regions just like we have in the physical world governments that run territories we call countries or states and the presidents and the heads and the kings and so on who have ruled the earth similarly the other areas are also ruled by rulers and when you see those rulers with great flourish maintaining the whole universe the entire universe it's a big powerful position they are also souls with their good karma they took that position with their very good karma we got human beings they became rulers of a higher astral plane or one of the big planes so when we see them and they look at our master who is with us like a friend we both are traveling like tourists in an astral realm and go to the ruler the ruler comes down to bow down to our master and we say what has happened we were both seekers going up together as friends and why the ruler giving so much respect to the master and we are trying to be so good to the ruler is is the is like a we worship him today as god by the way most religions are worshiping a god god sitting in heaven is the ruler of that astral plane they all think he is god the creator he is the creator and sustainer of this universe he follows all the descriptions he he is actually covered by all descriptions given by all religions about god but he is the head of the astral plane and if god is giving that kind of obeisance to your master looks very strange and then we say what's going on he says you don't know who who you are with you don't know we like to come back to human form in order to come to a person like him it's a very strange experience you can go still higher and the universal mind and the creative powers there are also like rulers ultimately when you go you find that it is the master who we thought was a human being enlightened human being or more advanced human being trying to guide us as a guide or something was the destination we were looking for was our own totality was our own true self was such kind was was the ultimate true home sitting here amongst us it's very difficult to uh, understand appreciate this here so that is why meditation can help in validating all these things and it's a personal validation i have never believed in a second person validation it doesn't work not for me and not for many other friends of mine 
I want to have personal validation. Somebody else has seen something good, good for that person, not good for me. I I won't disbelieve. That's another thing that many people have their faith based upon this. We know this much. Nobody else can know more. So if you say I know more, no, I don't believe it. That's not correct. We don't know what the capacity of knowledge is so great. Capacity of higher awareness is so unlimited that we cannot judge what somebody else says. But we can say this much I have seen, this experience I have had, and therefore I can believe what my experience is. Rest I will believe when I see more. So this has always been my attitude. And by the way, this is the teaching of the great master. The great master says, in true spiritual practice, there is no scope for blind faith. Do not believe because somebody else says believe it. Do not believe on somebody else's experience, no matter how high. Believe your own experience. And when the potential is there, the capacity is there to have our own own experience. Why do we need to believe anybody else's experience? So that is why it's very important that we use meditation to validate. Validate for who? Do we need validation? Does the soul need validation? Not at all. It's only we are needing validation because we are identifying ourselves with our minds. The mind needs validation, not the soul. But when we think we are the mind, we need validation till we can cross the mind and discover that was just an instrument given to us. It was just a device given to us to explore a new experience through time and space. That's all. Here, no description is available. Our spiritual books are there in abundance. I look at the books, and I say, how can they describe that? How can any lecture? How can any talk? How can any book? How can any thinking ever describe? Even Par Brahm with a soul exists. No way, because our descriptions are limited to time and space. We can't get out of it. There is no potential in the mind for that. No capacity in the mind. So that is why. The truth is there, but can be validated by personal experience, by personally going into that state of being, where you discover how, in a timeless, spaceless state, everything was contained right there. It can be actually your experience, your awareness. I don't even like to call experience because we have used the word experience in time and space. I say your awareness. I can't find right words. Always I'm short of words to describe something that's beyond. But anybody can get it. And validate through meditation. Meditation is so simple. It's the art of withdrawing your attention from outside to within your own inside, at a known place behind your eyes. What could be simpler than that? There's no complexity at all. You put yourself. We have got the capacity. We have imagination. Use that. Imagine you are inside. You close your eyes. There is a darkness inside. You know that you are operating within that darkness in the head. You can feel your head. You can feel your eyes in front. You can feel your ears. You can feel your body around you. So simple. And we are constantly operating from there. That's the third eye center, starting point, the gateway. It's called the tenth door. To distinguish from the nine door that open outside, tenth door opens inside. The tenth door or the third eye center is behind the eyes. All we need to do is put attention there. If you put attention there, withdraw attention from outside, you begin to open the door and discover what else exists in our consciousness, not physical, in pure consciousness, in the ability to know and be aware. How much can you open up? And you can open up unlimited, and go on and on, and the, it's all within, within whatever form you are, because we are trying to reach the ultimate self. Even in the in the human body, where we feel our self is located, just follow that. Now the only problems are our attachments, our lack of faith, our continuous belief. This is the only reality, and that is why we are trapped here. If we are little open for that. We'll be able to find that, and of course, masters come here, and they also help us in validation. Therefore, they make it clear that they are taking us back home. They come for our seeking. 
seeking of the soul is what is needed for a master to appear in our life when the master appears he guarantees he takes us home that's his job the rest is all for the mind meditation validation everything for the mind i hope you enjoyed this holiday we'll have a break now have a little snack or lunch and i'll see you little while again later